Management Accounting 6A, the Segmented Income Statement. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of Singlist Test Preparation. Here is our email address and our phone number. We have a Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep. We also have a LinkedIn group now, MBA Accounting and Finance. Uh, I wanted to talk about the contribution approach to a segmented income statement. This is taken from the uh, Horngren Intro to Management Accounting text. You can see the 12th edition. And uh, I want to talk first about the headings that run down the left-hand side here. We have sales minus variable cost, which we come up with contribution margin, which I think most of us already know. But then the report gets a little more complicated. We're then going to subtract out fixed costs that are controller, controllable by the segment manager, the person managing that department. This happens to be a, uh, a teaching nonprofit type organization. We're going to see the divisions here in a minute. But any fixed costs that the manager that can control, maybe it's um, salary for certain employees, maybe it's space that they make a decision on renting and make a rent payment. And if we subtract contribution margin from that fixed cost the segment manager controls, we get contribution controlled by the segment manager. In other words, the contribution to profit based on the things that they control, sales or revenue, variable costs, and fixed costs they control. Beyond that, we have fixed costs controlled by others. Maybe there is, the company's decided as a whole that there is a, um, an allocation of space that the segment manager must pay regardless of how they perform. You can imagine a department store or maybe even Target. If you're managing the uh, household goods area of Target, Target is going to allocate a certain amount of costs for the building that you're in to your department, there's nothing you can do about it. That's out of your control, which is why this assignment says fixed costs controlled by others. And then when we get down past that, we get the true contribution by the segment, whether those fixed costs are controlled by the segment manager or whether they're controlled by, whether they're controlled by others. The last line down here is allocated or common costs. Those costs that are um, affect those costs that are spent to benefit everybody, but costs that we cannot allocate to specific areas of the company. Okay, so maybe it's insurance errors and omissions insurance, which covers everybody from a liability standpoint, but we can't, or at least we don't think we can effectively. Uh, allocate that to each division, so it's just a common cost that we use to subtract as a lump sum to get net income. So in this example, I've done a few things. This happens to be Music Teachers Incorporated, which exists to provide uh, education, services, and training. And the assumptions I made here are fixed costs for salary, personnel, benefits, and occupancy are controlled by the segment manager. So that's a fixed cost control by the segment manager that we saw right here. Occupancy costs for the building are allocated based on square footage of space occupied. And there was no method provided to allocate costs that are common costs, so we just left them as a lump sum. By definition, they're not allocated. So let's use subscriptions as an example. If you go to the subscription tab, we're going to see that uh, we're selling subscriptions to members and non-members. We sell a certain number of units to come up with net sales, and we also have some ad revenue. So that adds up to subscription sales that's on the first tab right there. We have some variable costs for subscriptions for printing and paper and postage, 247500 that gets to the tab. So we subtract those two, and we get a contribution margin for the subsidiary. Then we have a number for fixed costs controllable by the segment manager, 233000 roughly. And the way we got that number was, 
we took the salary that's allocated to subscriptions. 25% of that is benefits, 25% of salary. We got that number here, 25% of 150,000. They have some occupancy cost in the subscription division based on the percentage of square feet they occupy in the building, 20%. So we're multiplying that 230,000 number by 20%. And we add all that up, and we say that's the 233,500 that's controlled, the fixed cost that's controlled by the manager. And so if I scroll back up here, you'll see that. And if we subtract those fixed costs, we get the contribution controlled by the manager, 94000 Now, fixed costs controlled by others, we didn't have a method to allocate those costs. Those got all lumped together. I mean to say the unallocated common costs get all lumped together. One way of figuring out well, how much of these costs are not allocated, I did a few recaps on the summary page. And one of them was, how do I get common costs? Well, if I take my total costs that I was given in the problem right here, if I scroll up a bit, company-wide total expenses, 3,144,000. So that's the total cost number that I get at the beginning of the common cost recap. Right there. I take the variable costs allocated M12, which is way up here, all those variable costs for the for the segments. We it happened that we didn't have any for membership, but the other three divisions did. 591, 500. If I take the fixed cost that got allocated, that's linked to M16. Here's M16, the sum of the allocations for all four divisions. We saw the 233,500 at the bottom of the page. So all those fixed cost allocations come from right here. There's our fixed cost allocation. They go up to the top of the page, right here. They get summed over to a total right there. So if I take my total costs, I subtract the variable costs that are allocated, and I subtract the fixed costs that are allocated, whatever I'm left with, that's the common cost, which is a million 245 that goes right here and you can see that I reconciled so that the same net income that I had that I was given in the problem 131 300 or 131 131,000 is the same as the 131,000 net income that was given in the question so I know I've I've captured all the revenue and I've captured all the expenses if you'd like to see this problem in more detail, it will be on our Not on the Web listing that I talk about at the end of the videos. That's as far as we're going to get on 6A, Not on the Web, additional videos and templates that are not on YouTube, including the full explanation of this problem. Our YouTube channel, Kemboid STL, you can get a complete list of videos on the website. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat sessions, stltest.net is our website. Here's our email and our phone number. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you next time.